So uh, we are uh, we are sort of continuing. We've been, been we've been spending a bit of time with Paul. Actually, we we've looked at Second uh, Corinthians a couple of times uh, recently, and now we are going to look at uh, part of the beginning of uh, Ephesians, Paul's letter to the people of Ephesus. And so I would invite you, if you want to, uh, to pull out your Bibles or to view on the screen behind me, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14, which is part of Paul's sort of introductory um, section to the people of Ephesus. But there is something that we need to understand as we go through uh, that that could be confusing. And so we're going to illuminate that a quick after we read the passage. So Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to uh, sonship, to daughterhood, I guess as well, through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth. The gospel of your salvation, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, um, this is... Uh, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but uh, my English teacher in high school, she was always a little bit exasperated with Paul, uh, not because she didn't think what he said was valuable, but because he was a master of run-on sentences. So believe it or not, those verses are one sentence. In, in the original Greek. That is, those verses from 3 to 14, those 11 verses, that whole thing that I just read, one sentence. Thank you, Paul. How on earth are we supposed to understand a sentence like that? Well, that's okay, because translators have helped us to break it down a little bit and make it into sort of different sentences. But nonetheless, it is important because... Well, for a number of reasons. One is that it's important in the sense that Paul has these moments and they're beautiful and wonderful and significant and important. But Paul has these moments where he just gets so excited that he just crams tons of information and blessing and doxology and beauty all into one big outburst of praise, as it were. You, you can almost... Here, Paul, and, and you can almost see his poor scribe trying to get this all down as Paul is going on and on about all that God has done and is doing and will do and how great God is, waxing on in rapid tones while the poor scribe is trying to get it all down so that he can send it off to the Ephesians, right? It, it, and when Paul gets that way, 
We need to pay attention. I mean, we always need to pay attention to what God has to say through Paul. But when Paul gets this excited sort of tone and is cramming in all this stuff, he has something very special to deliver to us. Something that is incredibly important. And this morning, for us, as we read the letter, uh, the introduction, or part of the introduction to the letter uh, to the Ephesians, we need to recognize that there is a picture being painted here, a picture that gives us a perspective that is beyond the normal, human, mundane, everyday perspective. So, in order to help us understand that perspective, we need to uh, connect with a few uh, popular culture sort of things. Uh, Lately, we've been watching the Blue Jays. And uh, and you know, uh, if you've watched the Blue Jays or any sports sort of broadcast in recent years, that the technology has advanced in such a way that now, when, when they're trying to say who's out in the field or whatever, they have these little banners over their head that actually actually follow them as they walk around that say what their name is and what position they're playing, right? It's kind of cool technology, right? Um, And and then you need to combine that if you've ever seen like Canada, well, Canada's Got Talent is coming, but if you've ever seen like uh, America's Got Talent or whatever, and the judges sit there and they've got these big buzzers that, that when they push the buzzer, this big X shows up or there's a check mark, right, when they vote yes or whatever. Okay, so think of those two things. Now then you need to think of the idea of the earthly realm, which is the realm in which we spend our days and the, the realm that we normally see with our eyes and smell with our noses and hear with our ears and taste and touch and so on. That's the earthly realm. And, and when, when Paul talks about the heavenly realm or the heavenlies, Paul is not talking just about heaven where God dwells. And, and Paul is not talking about uh, heaven as in the sky, like we talked about last week. And Paul is not talking about heaven as in the stars either. Instead, Paul is talking about the heavenly realms, which includes both the, the, the realms where, where Satan and his minions live and the realm where God lives with his angels and his saints in glory. The heavenly realms is, it, you, could, you could almost use as a synonym, the spiritual realm. And something that Paul emphasizes throughout the book of Ephesians, the letter of Ephesians, is that in reality, you and I, though we cannot see it, we live at one and the same time, we live in both realms. You don't just live here on earth. You are actually somehow, in a way that is mysterious and beyond my comprehension, you are actually, Paul says in Ephesians, you are actually seated in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus. And he doesn't say you will be seated with with God in the heavenly realms. He says, no, no, you are. Somehow, you and I live both in the spiritual realm and in the physical, right? And so if you imagine that the heavenly realms is somewhere where we live, and if in that realm, you imagine that we have these little signs floating up above our heads, right? And instead of having our name on them, they have a box that can have one of three things in it. A question mark, or a checkbox, or a big X, right? If you imagine us walking around with those, and you imagine that from our perspective, before Jesus came, before Jesus came and lived and walked and talked and healed and died and rose again, before Jesus came, all of us would have been walking around with big X's on our head you don't make it. You don't make it into 
the heavenly realms where God lives. Instead, you belong to Satan and his minions and will face eternal judgment, whatever that looks like. Right? But then Paul says, as he goes on in this, that we have been blessed by Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And so instead of that big honking X floating above our heads as we walk around this earthly realm, we have something new. We have something new. And, and, and it's still not entirely always visible to us. But something has changed. This is what it says. Even in verse 4, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will the praise of His glorious grace with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. Something has changed. And instead of belonging to the heavenly realms of darkness, we now, Paul says, belong to the heavenly realms of God, of Jesus, and we have been adopted. And this starts to get at some of the blessings that Paul is talking about when he's talking about every spiritual blessing, right? When we were, when we were not saved by Jesus Christ, we were, <clears throat> we were in this condemned state. state. We had a broken relationship with God. We had a broken relationship with each other. We had a broken relationship <clears throat> with God's creation. We did not have anyone to guide us particularly except for the law which ultimately Paul says just condemned us all the more. We, we, didn't, we didn't have the capability of doing what was good. And God, not because He hated us, but because of our sin, as it were, couldn't even tolerate us because God doesn't tolerate anything less than perfection. And yet now that has all been changed. So what are these spiritual blessings? Well, these spiritual blessings are the blessings that equip us and enable us and bring us into the kingdom of God and allow us to be God's witnesses throughout the world so that we can do things through Christ by His power and the power of the Holy Spirit working in us to share the good news with people. So, Excuse me. First and foremost, we have been forgiven. We have been redeemed. Verse 7. In Christ, in Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, our sins, according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. Right? We have been given forgiveness, number one. But more than that, we have not only been given forgiveness, we have been brought from the place where we are in a relationship of creator and creation to a relationship where we are in the, the, the situation that we are father and son. Where we are brother, sister with Christ. Where we are co-heirs together with Christ. We have moved beyond just forgiveness to adoption. It would be a little bit like, you know, Stacy comes up and punches me in the face, which she's not going to do. But if she did, she comes up and punches me in the face, and I say, ah, Stacy, I forgive you. In fact, I'm going to adopt you as my sister. Right? It's, it's beyond the normal. Right? It's way beyond the normal. But not only have we been forgiven, not only have we been adopted, but also we have been given the Holy Spirit. 
which allows us to know the mystery of his will according to his purpose. Verse 9, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and on earth. And that gets to the next thing. Another spiritual blessing is that we are going to be part of the, the reconciliation and recreation of all things. We're not going to be stuck in this world where, where so many people have question marks floating around their heads because their, their state is undetermined by them. They don't know. They haven't made a choice. We're not going to be stuck in this world where things are full of grief and horror and sin and brokenness for all time. Instead, in the fullness of time, all things will be united in Christ. Brothers and sisters, if you imagine that floating thing above our heads that is only visible in the heavenly realms, it's not just a check mark, but it's a, it's a seal too. It is a seal. It's like, it's like the, the, the America's Got Talent people put a check mark on it and then there was a seal put on it that this is irrevocable. It can never be changed. You can't be kicked out of the show anymore. You are in. And the seal is there and it can never change. And it's not just any kind of seal. It's the seal that says you're now part of the family. And that there are great things in store for you forever. And this is what Paul is trying to get at when he says that we are blessed in the heavenly realms with every blessing. We sit in these pews or we sit at home. We go about our daily business and we feel like just normal everyday people. And, and on one level we are. Just normal, everyday people. But this is the thing. Is that Christ has transformed the everyday normal. Into the very family of God. Now there are a lot of people out there. In the spiritual realms, if we were able to look in it, their, their destiny might be a question mark. We don't know. Right? And it's not our place to judge, of course. It's not our place to go, oh yeah, that person's destined for heaven. And oh yeah, that person's, de that's so not our job. But if we were able to see those floating boxes above people's heads in the heavenly realm, they might be full of question marks. And there's a lot of those people. And then there's a lot of people who have the wonderful, wonderful um, check mark too that God has given, right? But see, before Jesus, from our perspective, everybody would have had that X. Nobody would have had a question mark and nobody would have had a, had a check mark. And now we've got check marks and we've got question boxes from our perspective. But from God's perspective, he sees us and he loves us and we are pure and we are holy. And only he knows who ultimately rejects his gifts of salvation and says, no, no, no. And chooses their own X. But in the meantime, we have been given all that we need to share good news with them. To share the blessing of the heavenly realms. To share the praise of His glory. To share the opportunity to be a co-inheritor with Christ. To share the opportunity to be part of the family. To be, share the promise that we can be sealed with the Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance. And so, brothers and sisters, let us, let us, like Paul, 
as Paul says a little bit further on, I just lost my spot, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Let us thank God for one another and for our salvation in Jesus. And let us praise Him for it. And let us go and share that good news, that gospel that we have. This is what Paul says in verse 15. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power <coughs> toward us who believe. Brothers and sisters. We have a great inheritance to share with all who will receive. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for drawing us together again in your name, O oh God. Lord, please help us. Help us to continue to know and grow in your inheritance and in the blessings that you have given us in the spiritual realm. Knowing that we are not lacking in anything. That is needed for our salvation. And for our adoption. And for our witnessing. Oh God. Guide us we pray. That we may share in the journey of changing those question marks to check marks. Oh God. Not that it is our job to save people, but that we may be people who share so that you working through the Holy Spirit may save them. May we share your love. May we share your word. May we share your righteousness and holiness. May we do so in humility and as mirrors of your son, Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.